good old fun music we can all groove and chill to. Stay tuned right here on the Iconic Playlist. This is the Iconic Playlist. All righty, continuing the idea of going over all my box sets that I recently picked up and listening to them. So I've been doing Led Zeppelin, I've been doing Van Halen, and now I am doing this Yes box set. So I got a five album collection. Now this was the first time I added Yes to my collection, so this is my first real introduction to Yes. I know a little bit of John Anderson's career. I am not familiar with Yes. This is my first introduction, like I said. I know, late to the party. That's the whole point of these series, discovering new artists, you know, to appreciate all eras of music. So like I said, when I bought this, I really didn't know what I was getting. I literally just bought it because I heard good things about Yes, and it was only $15. So five albums for $15 is a great deal. So now looking at the discography, I realize it's not the beginning albums because there's the album Yes from 1969, Time and a Word from 1970, the Yes album from 1971, Fragile from 1971. So I guess I did two things in 1971. Close to the Edge in 1972, which I did see this one before. I thought that was going to be in the box set. I was confused and I bought it. Tales from the Tropographic Ocean from 1973. Relayer from 1974. All of those are not in this box set. I'm guessing they're in their own own separate box set. And I can tell just by the amount of songs and all these albums before listening to them that they were going to be more of an experimental band because like Relayer itself only has three songs on the entire album. So you knew they were going to be like more experimental which when it comes to experimental music I can be 50-50 on sometimes I find it really fascinating really cool I can't always listen to it constantly because it can be kind of a lot for your brain at once to constantly listen to or it can be on the other opposite end where I'm like you know what I can't listen to this and you know so it's always a 50-50 thing for me so I really did not know how I was going to feel about yes I never liked to listen to bands before I own them in my collection when it comes to bands and singers I like going in, into things blindly I will take suggestions and things but I won't really necessarily listen to something unless I was really unsure to the point where I have to just convince myself oh well, yes I was pretty determined that I was going to enjoy the albums so today I'm talking about going for the one the 1977 release so it has has five songs on it. I will say there's a lot of variation on this album, and I do like it. The songs are longer, but they don't feel exhausting, which is really nice, because a lot of times experimental music can end up just feeling exhausting. And that's what I don't like, is when experimental rock music is exhausting. But there's a lot of elements in here. You know, for being 1977, there was a lot of 80s influences. Well, I guess, really, the 80s influenced kind of off Yes, I guess, in that scenario. Or bands similar to Yes. But yeah, there's a lot of, like, synthesizers that you don't want to hear a lot of. Well, synthesizer sound. I don't know if they actually use synthesizers, or if they just get, like, a synthesized guitar-type sound. I don't know. I will say, they had a lot of interesting sounds going on, a lot of different interesting styles. They combined a lot of styles together, which I personally... Personally, I'm really into. I love when the unique sounds, unique styles blended together into a bunch of chaos, but the chaos ends up working. And when it works, it works beautifully. When it doesn't, it fails miserably. And today, it worked beautifully with going for the one. I would say, lyrically speaking, all the songs are decent. You know, they aren't like just traditional songs, obviously. Along with the experimental music, they have more interesting lyrics like just for the song going for the one itself like here's some of the lyrics get the idea cross around the track when you leap on the flank of a thoroughbred racing chaser get the feel as the rhythm flows would you like to go and shoot the mountain masses and here you stand no taller than the grass seas and should you really chase so hard the truth of the sport plays rings around you going for the one going for the one get in the way as the tons of water racing with you crash into the rudders once at the start can you gamble that you really surely really mean to finish Like, I like how it's not just a traditional standard song, you know, a standard love song or standard, I guess, breakup song or just kind of nothingness songs or party songs. Like These are just like interestingly different songs. And I really appreciate that. I like that. And I think that's part of the reason why it didn't feel exhausting was because the lyrics weren't exhausting. So not just the music wasn't exhausting, but the lyrics weren't exhausting. It was a very enjoyable listen. Now, I will say it's not an album that I would constantly play. Like it's not an album that I would always play. I would play only once in a while. Because when it comes to that kind of music, again, I have to have space in between it. It's not like one of those albums that are extremely palatable in the sense of you want it every day. It's more like a fine dining experience where you want it every once in a while as like an artistic mood. <laughs> and 
you want something different. And that's exactly what I think Yes is going to fit into. I'm assuming the rest of their albums are going to be similar, although Tormato, which is going to be the next album that I uh, react and listen to, has a few more songs than going for the one does so i'm guessing it's a little bit less experimental in some ways or at least the songs themselves are shorter but judging by some of the song titles i'm very interested in hearing that album and i'll definitely be doing a video on that but yeah man i mean going for the one was very enjoyable i give it out of 10 oh, man i give it probably an 8 out of 10 it's a very solid album. There was nothing I didn't like on the album. There was there's really nothing bad on the album. I just give it an 8 out of 10, just taking two points off because it's not something that I can constantly play every day. And that's my only criticism. That's not even really criticism. That's just a personal taste. So it's only for personal taste why it's not a 10 out of 10 album. So yeah, I mean, it's a great album. I think anyone would enjoy it of any era. I think there's things to enjoy. If you like ballad songs, if you like rock songs, if you like slow or fast songs, it doesn't matter. There's something to enjoy in this album. And it's really nice. A lot of times the term experimental music scares away people. But this is the kind of good experimental music that you want in your system. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more music-related videos.